Okay, so not much to do right now, but uh, I'll just do a quick uh, entrance check. I, I noticed a little bit, I guess, a few, maybe 10 to 30 dead bees in front of the two uh, colonies on the left-hand side. Uh, they're all three still alive. I, uh, I did just add a little screen guard because I've noticed uh, little bees with missing heads out front and little uh, mouse turds so just to make sure the mice aren't getting in I made some quick uh, mouse guards and so what I do I have a little container here so I'll collect uh, some of those dead bees and then I'll check them for Nosema and just their basic uh, gut content so I'll, uh, I'll go down and have a look at the entrances so if you notice start to tell there but uh, some of these bees are missing pretty much heads uh, and there's little mouse turds uh, so just the indication so this yard here I do get mice sometimes uh, but rarely but uh, better be safe than sorry so what I'll do is I'll just show you the quick uh, miles guard that I put I just used, uh, used hardware cloth uh, these lysine colonies have uh, little slots there so I just bent them in shape and stuck them in there it'll prevent the the uh, the mice from getting in and then what I do is what I'll do is I'll collect some of those dead bees I'll probably collect it from the this colony here and uh, and then I'll go do a quick Nosema check at home. So when you're collecting dead bees, it's good to... So I scrape some out of from the bottom entrance of the, uh, the colony, but uh, make sure you count. So if you're going to do 10, do 10, because you're going to add X amount of uh, distilled water per bee. So you want to be fairly consistent. So I'll, uh, I'll probably collect 25. I had this little empty gum container in the truck, so I'll put it in there and then I'll just put them in a little Ziploc at home to do the crushing. Another thing on dead bees, uh, these are probably some of the, uh, the summer bees dying. Uh, but over winter, you'll probably notice, I guess you can see two bees centered in the camera there. So the one on the right top, Check the abdomen out so a much bigger abdomen and then the other one on the left bottom so right there that one there if you check the abdomen it's about half the size as the other one okay in this video i'm going to show you how to uh, process those dead bees that i collected off the front of that colony so i counted them out there's 25 dead bees there uh, I could technically take them out and crush them individually, uh, but for this first check, I'll put them all together. Uh, and it's a mix of small and large abdomen type bees. And uh, yeah, I picked them randomly off that front landing board. And you'll see how easy, easy it is. So 25 bees, you add one mil of water per bee. So I, I pre-measured uh, 25 mils of water here and I'll use a small Ziploc to do the uh, the mixing what you do is you take your dead bees stick them in your Ziploc spread them out a bit and literally take your water and just add them to the Ziploc now you're going to close it okay don't you don't want too much air in there so you're just gonna close it and now comes the fun part uh, I've got all these jars on the counter so I'm just gonna use a, a jar to start squishing these bees okay so technically I could have added the uh, the water afterwards uh, but uh, it just makes it easier so what you want to do is just macerate all the bees make sure you squish 
all the hind guts to, 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 for everything to come out. And you'll see that uh, as you do it, it'll get a, a brownish color. So it takes a couple minutes and that's all you do. Just crush a lot of abdomens. You're, you're crushing all the feces out of these bees. Okay, so once they're all crushed, I'm gonna take it and then I'm gonna use my fingers to basically make sure that the, the whole gut supply is well mixed. I'm never gonna put my fingers in there, but you'll notice that basically there's some feces pretty much everywhere, so you wanna make sure you get all the the content mixed up and then I like having it all in the bottom okay so just mix it up okay a bit more squishing a bit more squishing uh, it's gross but science is not always uh, pleasant okay so do that okay uh, Nosema spores are fairly heavy, so they'll settle up fairly quick. So once you're ready to put the sample on the slide and then the cover slip, so you want to keep macerating it, mixing it well while you're getting ready. Okay, because once uh, you stop moving around, it uh, basically basically they'll, they'll, the spores will start settling in the bottom. So I've got an old chopstick here that I use to do my uh, I'll just take a dab out of the middle mix it up mix it up and then I'm just gonna put a, a couple of drops in the middle here and that's it. Mix it around and we're gonna put it on the microscope right away and we're gonna have a look. Okay that's it and then you can discard this ziplock once you're done okay so next you'll take your cover slip and just stick it on top one drop is usually enough and uh yeah i'll put it on the microscope and then i'll show you what it looks like on the microscope so there's my microscope set up and uh, it's got the camera on it, it's all set up, so we'll, uh, we'll do a quick check on it. Okay, so in, uh, I guess the screenshot here is the software on my computer uh, to run the, uh, the microscope. So it's got a digital camera built in. Right now it's on times, uh, let's see, times 10, so 100 power. Uh, magnification so you'll notice I'll zoom in a bit uh, we'll go 50% so right now it's these for example this is an example of a rust spore there's pollens in there bee parts and actually lo and behold if you look in the background there I'll try to get it zoomed in uh, you can actually see lots of nosema spores uh, all through the back there so I'll uh, I'll go down one power uh, but it looks like this colony seems to have a, a case of nosema uh, let's uh, zoom around a bit and then we'll uh, we'll we'll go back lots of interesting pollens uh so what i'll do there's a big looks like a a fireweed pollen over here uh let's see some masters there was so it looks like a dandelion i'll just scroll down a bit there's an interesting one here oops okay here I'll have to check out to see what that is my reference list uh, these here are, let's see there's a few type that are probably dandelion slash hawkweed and then these are probably uh, 
mountain asters and I'm guessing are probably uh, uh, the, the native goldenrod. So what we'll do is we'll zoom in and we'll go, we're going to go have a look at uh, some new SEMA spores. Okay, so I'll, I'll zoom out, so 20, so it looks like uh, that side colony, so the, the current bees, or the dead ones on the landing board, seem to have a fairly high concentration of nosema spores, so these little bluish oval shaped, uh, I guess, spores. Uh, those are nosema spores. Uh, like I said before, these are rust spores. These are aster pollens. Uh, this one here, I do have it on my in my reference sheet, but I just can't recall what type of pollen this one is on top here. Uh, we'll zoom around a bit. So there is really nothing I can do about it now because uh, it's severely infested. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Uh, and yeah, so hence the reason the higher mortality in front of a colony, typically I notice a lot of these nosema spores. Uh, Chances are probably I've clear I cleared all the dead bees out front of the the colony, so I'll uh, I'll uh, be able to do a a monthly check. So I've noticed another few little interesting items that are typically associated with mortality in honeybees with connection to nosema. I'm not sure if you can see them, but over here there's little globes. Another globe here. Uh, I can't recall exactly how you call them, and more here. So I'll uh, I'll pause the video and then I'll go get the uh, the actual name of those little globes. Okay, I'm back. So I looked it up and I I just checked uh, Randy Oliver's website there and. Pretty sure the little globes that I'm seeing is this Malpi Gamobia Meli Feech. I don't know how to pronounce that, but anyways, it's a it's associated with uh, Nosema. Uh, it, it it is connected to death of the host, so there's no surprises there. Uh, like I mentioned before, this was the stressed colony that had really high mite loads uh, late summer. Uh, I did do a Formic Pro on it. I'd run uh, OAV in May a few times. And again, uh, I think it was in August. But then the, no, the not the Nosema, but the mites uh, never, the, the load always stay really high. So I... Uh, I just ran it as an experiment to see what would happen, and it did develop uh, PMS. So you can see how stress. So one thing to note, so I'll just go back to the microscope slide. One thing to note is these are likely summer bees uh, dying before winter comes. So the key will be to do another uh, check probably end of November and to see if the the, the loads are still high because I've noticed that uh, the late summer foragers tend to show high levels of nosema uh, but then there's a drop uh, in November December uh, 
uh, as it's winter bees dying out. So if I do see high mortality throughout the winter then, and this type of nosema loads, then I know that that colony will, will struggle, uh, likely make it through winter, but it'll struggle in spring. Uh, but it's too early to tell because this might just be summer bees and it might be nothing to worry about. So that's uh, it's all part of understanding what's going on. And the more bees you look at on a microscope, the more you'll start noticing these these spores, the type of pollens uh, included. Uh, it's quite a fascinating world, and sometimes you'll actually get bee gut uh, walls, and then you'll actually see where the uh, the nosema spores hang out on the the gut walls, and it'll be. Uh, like massive amounts of spores all stuck together. So anyways, hope you found this interesting. Uh, so yeah, I'll have to look for a YouTube name for myself, but uh, I, uh, I enjoy understanding what's going on in a colony. So the more you look into things, the more you find out you don't know anything. So sounds good. Catch you later.